Hi, Elena. Hi. I'm Sue. I've worked in clinical research for 30 years. I started off life in healthy volunteers. I became a project manager. I then did clinical trial auditing before becoming a trainer to help people like yourself to understand about GCP. Do you know what GCP stands for? I don't, I'm sorry. Okay, GCP stands for Good Clinical Practice. So what is GCP? How could we describe it? It's actually a standard for conducting clinical trials. If you like, it gives us guidance on the design, the conduct, the performance, the monitoring, the auditing, the recording and analysis and reporting of clinical trial data. We're now going to look at the history of GCP and we have on the slide a timeline of what happens. As you can see, the timeline covers various dates. If you click on them, you can go to further reading. Each of these regions set up a steering committee. And this was a unique project, because the first time ever, the regulators and the manufacturers actually talked together. For further details about the reasons for harmonisation, you can find it on the ICH website. We're going to give you a demonstration of the website. We've already looked at the history of ICH, and if you go onto the website, here's the URL, you will find on the homepage a section about ICH. What was the disease area of the top-selling drug in 2010? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe car... Stop. Stop right there. What do you think? I'll give you four choices. Yes, well done. It is acid reflux. The multidisciplinary guideline I like is the M4 guideline. What's the M4 guideline about? It's about the common technical document. What's the common technical document? It's the way information has to be put together to send to the regulatory authorities. We have to put it in a specific way. If you like, it's the, why are we doing this study? Who are we doing it to? What are we going to do to them? And how often are we going to do it? It tells us as well the objectives and the endpoints. These are very important when we do our protocol. So if we were designing a clinical trial in antibiotics, do you think we should choose the parallel design or the crossover design? Yes, well done. The right design for an antibiotic study is a parallel group study where the patient just takes one medication. But sometimes it's very difficult to make things look exactly the same. What if we wanted to compare a tablet with a capsule? Then we have to use a system called double dummy. We'll look at double dummy now. So say we are comparing one tablet with two capsules. It is obvious which is the tablet and which is the capsule. So how can we make it so the patients don't know what they are taking? Actually, it's like tossing a coin. If we toss a coin and we say, heads, then they have to have drug A. If we tossed it and it came down to tails, then you have drug B. 